Hello everybody, I'm Nick and welcome to another episode of CodeCop, the series where we go over questionable advice given on LinkedIn, Twitter or blogs and we try to turn it into good advice. LinkedIn specifically is notorious for the algorithm promoting really, really bad advice because it takes very little likes to get promoted to other people's network. So in this video I have a very interesting piece of advice by someone I personally follow because they tend to provide really, really good advice. So the reason why I'm making this is because even though it's something I've talked about in the past, I want people to watch this video and understand that just because the general advice given is good, it doesn't mean that this specific thing is good. And it's not necessarily terrible like other things we've seen in CodeCop, but it is pretty bad in my opinion because there is not enough context. And usually that's the biggest pitfall of posts on LinkedIn. Now, as always, everything is anonymized. This is not about the person. This is about the advice. If you like that content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out our courses on domotrain.com. Okay, so let's take a look at the advice itself. And usually all of them have a photo associated with it. And in this case, the photo is this primary constructors, less boilerplate. Those of you who have been following the channel for a long time are probably tired of me talking about this topic, but as long as people, especially really good people, give similar advice, I have to explain why I don't agree with it. Now, I should make something very clear before I go into this specific example. I love primary constructors in general. I just don't think that the advice given on this specific context is good and I think you should stay away until they eventually fix it in .NET 9 or .NET 10, which is more like C Sharp 13 or C Sharp 14 actually. So what's the advice? With a newly introduced primary constructor, you can remove a lot of boilerplate code from your injected services from dependency injection container. So in .NET 7, you have this private read-only high dependent field that's being injected through the constructor and then it's being used in the do method. And now with .NET 8 and C Sharp 13, you can merge all that in this primary constructor. Now, because this is used into a method in this specific example, the outcome behind the scenes will be the same. We will still have a field captured, even though it's a constructor parameter, because that will need to then be used into a method. So as long as a method in your code is using it, a field will be generated. We can see that very easily, actually, if I go on this very specific example and I go to the low level C sharp, and if I expand it, you will see we have the I dependent field. There's a bit of a difference, which I think is a major difference, but fundamentally you still have a field, you still have constructor injection, assignment, and then usage in the do method. Now, if the do method was not using that injected parameter, so if I just comment it out and I rebuild, then this constructor parameter will just be disposed and not used. So there is no field captured. You have to understand that in primary constructors, the ability to capture a parameter in a field is only there if you later use that parameter into a method or into a property or into something in your class. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called Deep Dive into Modular Monoliths. And it's a direct sequel from the Getting Started delivered a few weeks ago by Ardalis or Steve Smith. Steve did an amazing job with that first course and you loved it. So we had to get out the Deep Dive one as fast as possible just to see how the whole application is completing and being ready to go to production with more features and more modules to have a complete modular monolith, which in case you don't know, I think it's the Goldilocks zone between microservices and old bad monoliths. It's where most people, and by most, I mean almost everyone should start before they feel like they have to go anywhere else, maybe microservices or maybe even further. Both the deep dive and the getting started should be taken by every .NET developer working in modern .NET. There's so many best practices you're gonna learn there. And to celebrate the launch of the deep dive, you can use code modular20 at checkout or use the link in the description to claim 20% off that course. And you can also add the Getting Started course in your basket for a massive discount if you don't have that already. And on top of that, we also have a From Zero to Hero Modular Models bundle now, which allows you to combine both courses with a 20% discount. Okay, now back to the video. So the problem isn't really with the general advice of this, and I would agree with it, except for one thing, this read-only keyword. We don't have a way with primary constructors to specify that the parameter being injected is read only. What does that mean? Well, that means that if I go here and this is read only and I say that dependent equals null, for example, well, I can't do that because the compiler doesn't allow me. This field is read only. 
However, if I was to use even the suggested refactoring here to turn it into a primary constructor, well, okay, the compiler now allows me and it very nicely refactors this, but what if I just say now dependent equals null? Now I have the ability to do that because my code allows it because that read-only keyword cannot be used here. And you can say that this is nice because now I don't have to carry that read-only word around. But the truth is, well, why? There was functionality you had in there and it's there for a reason. You saying that you can have this parameter over here turn into a primary constructor and technically be the same thing. Well, it isn't because you just lost a crucial part of your application or your class. They are built to have this as read-only. If it doesn't matter to you, I dare you, go to every single one of your applications that have a private read-only field injection through the constructor and just remove that read-only parameter and see how it goes in your code review. But if you have a proper code review framework in place, this will be rejected because there is no reason for your class, the class itself, to be able to mutate what is being injected through dependency injection. There's a reason why that's being injected. It is to be used. Now you can say, well, you can see the class, just don't set it to anything. That's not enough of a good excuse for me because with the same logic, well, you know, don't use a property. Don't do something like this. So public int age, for example, and have a getter and a setter that can have also logic in them. Just have a public field, right? Because you know your application is being used by you and you can only set the age and the setter and get the age through the field. So why don't we just have fields everywhere? Well, having safeguards in place makes it easier for everyone to work with the code, both us and consumers. And even if you're working in a given class, having that safeguard, that ability to prevent someone from doing something unintended is there for a reason. Now, I always like to provide the context because some people also write some text alongside the LinkedIn post. So in this case, the post was primary constructor in C-Sharp 12 and .NET 9 with the new addition of primary constructor in the upcoming .NET 8 and C-Sharp 12 release, which by now it's released, so this is a bit outdated. This post, however, was published two weeks ago, so I'm assuming this was a canned or reused a piece of advice, which by the way is very common for people on LinkedIn to do. There's some people who just recycle the same picture over and over again every week. And it works because all of them are getting <laughs> hundreds of reactions. So it's amazing, it's great. And the question is, what do you think about this new way? And thankfully, the comments on this post actually address this disparity. And that's great. People like John, for example, jump in the comments and say, you can define values as read only. That can be dangerous, 100% agree. Find from constructors of entities where you define properties. I 100% agree with John here. Not so much for services where you're injecting dependencies. I couldn't agree more. John, if you're watching the videos, amazing advice. Also doesn't resolve with mediator handlers, bummer. I didn't know that this was a reason because I haven't obviously used mediator handlers with this feature, but if it does, well, that's interesting then because reflection seems to be working differently behind the scenes as well, which I'm guessing I'm going to have to do a deep dive and understand what other problems this feature can have. Now, many people ask, is there a way to use a primary constructor but still have a read-only field? And there is, and it's not great, but I'm going to show you. So I can convert this into a primary constructor, and then what I can say is private read-only, I dependent of dependent equals dependent, and then I am using the underscore dependent field over here. This has a compiler warning and basically graying out saying, just remove this dude and use the parameter directly into a method. So we don't really want to do that, but if we were, this is exactly what solves the problem. If I compile this code and I go into the IL viewer, you will see that now we still have that field, but it is now read only and is setting the value correctly over here. So this approach gives us exactly the same code as what we had before. It doesn't look great and IDs are like what exactly you're trying to do here, but it is still shorter than what we had before. So you make your own choices here. And I do want to know from you in the comments, what do you think about this? Do you care about the read-only not being available here? Would you like to have it? If yes, how? Use read-only, maybe use the val keyword like Kotlin or what is your opinion about all this? Leave a comment down below and please let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.